I have a video on this channel called How to Improve Your Eyesight with Yoga. It has over a quarter of a million views and 647 comments in the comment section. People want to know things like, will it really work? How long will it take to work? And will I be able to get rid of my glasses? Will I be able to get rid of astigmatism? You know, people actually give me their exact vision diagnosis that they've got from an optometrist. For example, I have minus 3.5 and they want to know, will the exercises give them perfect vision? So first of all, let's look at my scope of practice. I'm a yoga instructor. My education is I have a PhD in communications and cultural studies, which means I can show you how to do some yoga exercises for your eyes, but I'm not an optometrist. However, because I am a PhD, I am really good at researching, which means I was able to research exactly what the scientific data shows that eye exercises can do for you and what eye exercises cannot do for you. So let's get into that. Today, we're going to have an eye yoga sandwich, starting with some good news, sandwiched with some bad news, and finishing with some good news based on the research. So let's start with the good news. Eye yoga definitely works when it comes to reducing the eye strain that we experience, we all experience from staring at our computer screens for hours on end and focusing on objects that are close in. So eye yoga exercises that I have shown you, like the palming, and this is where you rub your hands together, you create some energy, friction and heat, and then you place them over your eyes and give them a nice cooling energy bath. This works. Another eye yoga exercise that works is to reduce the strain of staring at, eye, uh, staring at computer screens, uh, books and objects that are close in is the one where you look at the palms of your hands and then you open them and then you stare at something, you gaze at something that's far away. That one works really way good for a computer screen. So this close up and far away eye exercise will relieve the strain on, your, on focusing muscles inside your eyes and the muscles that control your alignment that have to work harder when you're focusing on objects that are close in as opposed to the ones that are further away. It can also stimulate blinking, which can relieve dry eyes, which is something that is also common with prolonged screen time. Okay, so before I give you the bad news and more good news, thank you so much for giving this video a thumbs up and put relieving eye strain is important in the comments. And thank you, I so appreciate you subscribing and liking the videos. This is, uh, and putting, dispelling, thank you for dispelling myths about eye yoga in the comments. Okay, now for the bad news. Eye yoga will not improve your vision, I'm so sorry. There are two basic reasons why eye yoga cannot improve your vision according to optometry doctor Gary Heating. So let's listen to the optometrist and I'll put a link in the show notes to uh, Gary Heating so you can check out his article. Eye yoga cannot change the shape of your eyeball. So if you're farsighted, you can't see things that are close in because your eyeball is too short. And if you're nearsighted, you can't see things that are far away because your eyeball is too long. And if you have astigmatism, like I do, your cornea has an irregular shape. So your vision is literally dependent on the anatomy of your eyeball. And no amount of moving your eyes up and down, side to side, and in circles is going to change the anatomy of your eyeball, the shape of your eye. So it's similar to the anatomy of our skeleton and skeletal variations in yoga. So for example, no amount of hip rotation exercises like pigeon pose is going to get you into lotus pose if the top of your femur bone won't move that way in your pelvis because of skeletal variation. If you've got a long femur bone that goes out like that. So let's look at the second reason. As you age, your eyeball lens naturally loses its elasticity. 
and it loses your ability to be able to focus on objects up close. So again, the movements of eye yoga up and down, side to side, and in circular motions, this is not going to change the elasticity of your eye lens. Okay, now I promised you that I was gonna give you some eye yoga sandwich in this video, so we're going to complete this with some good news that comes from the field of polyvagal theory, something I'm very passionate about, and ventral vagus activation. So your ventral vagus network runs upward from your diaphragm up to your brainstem, and it crosses over your nerves from uh, in your lungs, your neck, your throat, and would you believe that it goes into your eyes? So there are many ways to stimulate your ventral vagus nerve, and I offer detailed instructions on that in our membership community, in our ventral vagus activation course, which has a beginner, intermediate, and advanced 30-minute yoga classes for ventral vagus activation, and uh, Qigong-inspired yoga flow for ventral vagus activation, and a moving mudra series for ventral vagus activation. So those are awesome classes for our members. However, one of the ways that you can activate your ventral vagus nerve is with eye yoga. So basically, when we mindfully practice eye yoga, we're stimulating the ventral vagus nerve. And what we're doing is we're sending a message to our brain that it's okay to relax. So when you stimulate your ventral vagus nerve with eye yoga, you're sending a message to your brain that it's time to relax and de-stress, which will lead to long-term improvements in mood, well-being, and resilience the more you practice your eye yoga. So if you like this video, then you're probably going to like my video, Self Facial Massage and Aromatherapy for Tired Eyes. And I will link to that on the screen here and in the show notes. In it, I show you palming exercises and some other self-massage to soothe your tired eyes.